Good evening from Washington. I'm Larry O'Connor, and the economy, or lack thereof, here in the United States of America continues to be the dominant issue, not just here in Washington, D.C., but certainly across this nation at every kitchen table. And it's going to loom large in the upcoming midterm elections. Now, Republicans assure us, should they get the majority, they're going to do something about it. Well, what will they do? Joining us right now is one of the important voices on the over, excuse me, on the Ways and Means Committee. That means a lot of dollars and cents. Congressman Kevin Hearn of Oklahoma. Representative Hearn, thank you for joining us tonight. It's great to be with you. Well, uh, first of all, do you agree? Is the economy really the number one issue for you and for the party going into these midterms? Oh, there's no question about it. When you look at all the polling, Americans are getting crushed by the high inflation we're seeing and feeling across this country. And, you know, the sad part about all of this was it's self-induced by the Biden administration back all the way back in March of last year when they tried to t deny that spending was going to cause inflation. Chairman Powell on the monetary side over the, over the chair of the Fed said the same thing. Oh, this is not a big deal. And now everybody from even previous administrations have said this was the start of what we're seeing today. And uh, this this administration is hoping and praying for you know, bad job news. Uh, it wasn't bad enough today. It has to get worse. Uh, wages have to continue to shrink and the economy has to slow down. And that's how this administration defines success, which is it's a pretty sad day for all Americans. Yeah, and today's jobs number was uh, not awful, but it was certainly lower than yesterday's job number. They're treating it like it was this huge, great story. But I don't know, last I checked, this is often a month where companies are ramping up and hiring for the Christmas season. So I expected a bigger number. A lot of economists were hoping for a bigger number. And there's also a hidden number there, and that is the people who aren't participating in the workforce anymore, Congressman Hearn. Uh, first of all, your analysis of where we are jobs-wise right now, and hopefully what you could do with your party once you gain majority in the House. Well, you're exactly right. You know, it's sort of uh, this yin and yang going on uh, to define success. All Americans, you know, it's something growing, a business growing. I spent 35 years in business before coming to Congress uh, just four years ago. I never in my wildest imagination thought you'd define success of having less growth uh, in your business or needing to hire fewer people. To me, that was uh, sort of an example of failure of leadership. And that's what this president is, is failed leadership. Uh, spending money to destroy our oil and gas industry, making us dependent on foreign nations. And what you're seeing now, are the companies are, they're kind of pulling back, uh, concerned about where this administration is going, uh, knowing that this, this midterm election is critical to the future success of their businesses. And that, that's why you're seeing so much uh, voters uh, disincernment with, with this president and his administration. Well, and there's also the notion that if you are lucky enough to get a job or if you've decided to get off the sofa and stop collecting benefits and go get a job, let's say you're fortunate enough to make 70000 a year. I saw this report out of the Federal Reserve in Dallas. The New York Post wrote it up. If you're making 70000 a year right now, after Biden's taxes, that's really about 52000 plus. But then after the Biden inflation over the last year and a half, it's really closer to $48,000. In other words, if you were making seventy grand a year three years ago in 2019, you were able to use that money with buying power of up to about 15% greater than we have under Joe Biden right now. That's devastating. That's a pay cut, not due to anyone's employer or corporation they work for, or based on natural free market supply and demand issues. It's just the government's intervention. Well, to put it in kind of a, even layman's terms on this is that you're spending about a month's worth of salary right now just to get you back to where you were with President Trump uh, in the late 2020, uh, in late 2020. And so, you know, that's what's really going on. That's what inflation really means. You know, we all talk about it in technical terms. The American people, all of us individually fill it in our pocketbooks. We have less to spend in the bottom line. You know, the administration wants to talk about, you know, 8%, but when you talk to the people who supply goods and services to everyday Americans, when you look at energy for your home and fuel for your car and food for your family, those three components of your disposable income, it's about 85% what you spent your money on. Those are up somewhere close to 20%. So that's the real number that Americans are feeling. And again, they're just, they're saying, well, how do we fix this? Well, I, I can tell you one of the things you have to do is you actually have to go out and create a budget because this administration, uh, or the Democrats rather, have not done a single budget in the four years that I've been in Congress. They've just continued to spend money yeah. and, and Pelosi's House of Representatives. And that this is where we're at today. 
So let's talk about that because uh, it, should the Republicans, it sure looks like the Republicans are going to have a majority. The question is how big that majority will be. You're still going to have Joe Biden in the White House. And who knows, we may still have Kamala Harris breaking a tie in the Senate. What can the House do? starting right there with budgets because I, I remember john boehner back in 2010 saying give us the majority we'll get back to regular order no more omnibus packages no more continuing resolutions it's going to be you know the regular order process with budgets and working out the spending can you do that will you do that well a couple things you have to stop the spending before you can actually start lowering it and to your point we don't have the white house uh, we don't know where the senate's going to be at uh you know coming after the midterms but what I do know is I've actually done the only two budgets in the House of Representatives in the last two years on the Republican Study Committee uh, as the budget chairman. So I spent about five and a half months last year working to a balanced budget proposal with a few of my colleagues. And again, this year, I can tell you that it can be done. It's going to take a lot of hard work on both sides. It has to be a bipartisan move to make this happen. But I, you know, I came into Congress in, in the fall of 18, and the national debt was $18 trillion. And as we know, this week, it passed $31 trillion. The American people have always said, well, how does this impact? Well, now you're seeing it. Persistent inflation that some of us have not seen since the late 70s, the early 80s, when I was coming out of high school. And right now, it's devastating because the interest on our debt in the next couple of years will be more than what we're paying for our national defense. And so it's real. It's here. And we've got to deal with it. You know, I, I've seen these headlines uh, from a lot of the really smart economists, you know, at the New York Times. Uh, they say things like, you know, uh, sure, inflation is bad, but it's actually a good thing. That's what they're trying to sell on us, Congressman Hearn. Uh, can, can you sort of combat this narrative that we're hearing from these left-wing economists who are actually trying to sell us that, you know, we had it too easy, too good for too long. It's about time we faced reality on how much things cost. Is that really what's at play here? Well, what you have is you have a group of economists out there say, that says debt doesn't matter as long as it's denominated in, in the U.S. dollars. The problem is, is China has something to say about that as they're starting to work on their digital currency to sort of remove uh, the fiat currency of the U.S. dollar. And when that happens, they're going to be able to control what goes on in America. If you're starting to see the United States trying to play catch up to some other European nations that are doing that. People are trying to move away from the paper dollar, which has no really intrinsic value other than what somebody's willing to trade it for. The president, they've been floating this idea that they're disenchanted with Janet Yellen. They don't think that she's political enough and aggressive enough as the Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, where do you stand? Have you lost confidence in Secretary Yellen at this point, too? Well, I've had the chance to interview her a couple times on the Ways and Means Committee. She's obviously very well educated. And she's been on both sides of this as the chairman of the Fed and also now as the secretary of Treasury. She knows what's going on right now is uh, disheartening for America. She knows how to fix it, but she has a political boss uh, and Democrats who want to destroy this nation. And so I think they're at odds in that, that they're trying to discredit her. She knows what to do and she can't do it. But we've got to get back to this and have a plan. And that's what the commitment to America is. Return to an economy that's strong, a nation that's stay safe and a future that's built on freedom. And right now, what we're not seeing, which is the last component of this commitment to America, is a government that's accountable to the American people. And, and all these are critically important to how we move America forward. Well, I knew we'd talk to a congressman from Oklahoma sooner rather than later. See what I did uh, there, yeah. congressman? <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Congressman Kevin Hearn from Oklahoma.